When I started my Amazon business over five years ago, this is the video I wish I had had. Because in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the biggest traps that I fell into on my way to selling over $3 million on Amazon. Especially as we're headed into the Christmas sales rush right now, I wanna focus on some specific actionable advice that's gonna make you thousands of extra dollars this Q4 if you implement what I'm showing you. So I'm gonna skip the fluff and just jump straight into it for you. The first big mistake that I made as a beginner Amazon seller, especially when I started selling, I got stuck around the you know ten dollars to $20,000 a month mark. I see a lot of new Amazon sellers, they get stuck at that mark. Not a bad thing that you're stuck at making a couple thousand bucks profit a month, but I want your Amazon business to be much, much more than that. And the biggest thing that's gonna help you guys out, especially moving into Q4, is understanding how much to buy of a product. So buying too small was a huge mistake that I made my first Q4. Even though during my first Q4, I did about $160,000 in sales, it could have been way more than that if I had just kind of locked in, focused, and showed you what I'm about to show you right now, right? So the biggest thing I want you guys to keep in mind is let's say you're sourcing some Nike shoes, something like that, pretty classic Q4 type product, right? We'll go into the types of products you should be selling, but this type of product is going to be a great product for Q4. It's super giftable, shoes, clothing, makeup, toys, all that kind of stuff, right? But there's a huge difference between the amount of people that are buying this listing right now. So as you can see right here, seller apps telling us that this listing is selling a little over 2000 times per month, split between all the variations on this listing. But as we head closer into Q4, there's going to be a huge chance that this is going to be even faster than it says up here on seller amp, right? It's just natural. Everything on Amazon is going to sell faster, especially in the shoes and clothing category. So this is kind of what I'm looking into when I'm buying inventory for my business, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how many of these sales on the listing are going to this actual variation right here, right? So this is all the sizes, all the colors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the ASIN up here from seller amp, just click the copy button up there. Then I'm going to paste it down here on Keepa. These two tools, by the way, they're about 20 bucks a month. They're like the only two tools that you genuinely need as an Amazon seller. Seller amp is also our product research tool for full disclosure there. But when we punch in the ASIN to the Keepa variations chart here, we can see that this is actually the highest rated variation on the entire listing. See so if I take the ASIN filter away, you'll see what I mean here. So you can see right here, when I filter by ratings count, this has the most ratings of any item on the listing, which means that it's usually going to be the fastest seller on the listing. There's another way we can prove that, but this is what I like to see right off the bat is that the ratings are increasing on my item. If you're looking at an item that doesn't have variations, you're also going to be able to see that down here in this bottom chart. You can just press review count and it's going to show you the review count over time. You see how I mouse along that the review count down there kind of goes up. That is because obviously this item's selling. So more and more people are leaving reviews. The next thing I want to check on this to figure out an actionable number of this item that I could buy is going into the data offers tab of Keepa. Now you do have to be careful with this tab. Make sure you're interpreting the data correctly. I'll give you a couple tips to know what you're looking for. So this number right here, this is theoretically telling you how many items that this seller has sold in the last 30 days. It's charting their price and how much they had in stock at each individual moment in time. So if you've never used this tab on Keepa, it's super, super valuable. It's going to make you guys a ton of money in Q4, even outside of Q4. If you're watching this video in the middle of the year, you should definitely be diving into the Keepa offers tab. And specifically when we check out something like this seller right here, we can see how fast they actually sold their inventory, right? So they had 20 units in stock on October 1st. And then by October 10th, they were down to one unit. So they'd basically sold out within about 10 days, right? So if you break it down that way, you could sell about two units a day of this product outside of Q4 rush period, right? So I want to see if I can get any more data that shows me information like that. So something like this, you see, they go from 13 down to two very, very quickly. As soon as they drop their price to where it was competitive, they made a ton of sales. And I see that pattern repeat a lot, right? So they go five, four, three, two, one. That's very quick sales trickling all the way down from the seventh to the 29th. They made super quick sales there. So this shows me that this item sells at least a couple times a day if you're actually in stock on this item. And where we can take this to the next step, especially when you're trying to figure out how much to buy during Q4 is going up to the graph range in days 365 and then go ahead and zoom out and press include historical offers. And so then we can go ahead and just filter by like sold. This is going to show us the top sellers on this listing of all time. Again, it's not always going to be the most reliable data, something like this. You can see how the stock is just shooting all over the place. The data is not really super reliable in this case. I like going off of those nice natural declines that we saw there. And so what we can look for on this chart is sellers who were selling this during last year's holiday period. So I'm just kind of quickly mousing through this listing, looking for people who sold it during Q4 of last year to see if we can get a gauge on how in demand this item is during Q4, right? So this seller, they sold six units in a couple days last November. We can see another seller right here that made the mistake of not buying enough inventory right here. They had five units in stock. They were in stock, ready to go for the Christmas sales rush. But then boom, by December 5th, they were already sold out. I don't want that to be you who's already sold out on December 5th. And so always be combining the data on the data offers tab, get as many little details like that, especially if you can go back into the past and see how fast they sold during the holiday season. So that seller we just saw, they sold five in like a couple days leading up to the Christmas sales rush. Recently, people have been selling at least two or three units a day of this product. And so it's pretty reasonable, especially when we zoom out to the year long time 
time horizon here. How you can see as we got closer and closer to December 25th, the price just kept going up and the sales rank kept going down as people just kept buying this item more and more. So this would be something you could really stock up deep on. Out of Q4, it's already selling two or three times a month. Maybe it sells three, four, five times a day during Q4. This might be the type of item I'd maybe buy like 100 pairs of shoes if we found it profitable, just because we've already proven that people are super willing to buy this product a few times a day. Outside of Q4, you'd have a really tough time not selling 100 units on this one product alone, not to mention all the other sizes, all the other colors. So next, I want to break down how to find the best sales for you to source through. Real quick, before we do that, if you guys are looking for more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon, I put this together as what I hope will be the best free guide covering Amazon arbitrage on the internet. It's down below. You can see what it comes with right here. It's a couple hours of content, auto ungating ASINs, a few PDFs that teach you how to source, as well as a free Discord of over 50,000 Amazon sellers. It's all completely free. Go ahead and check out the Amazon Launchpad down below. And let's go ahead and talk about how you're going to be able to find awesome Black Friday sales, especially because a big mistake that a lot of people make is switching categories during the heat of Q4. That was something that I definitely believed my first year is I thought I had to sell toys. I thought I had to sell very specific products when the fact is anything that you've already found profitable is you're just going to be able to double down on that with the exception of maybe like grocery and a couple other categories. Almost everything else is going to be selling super, super fast on Amazon. And what you can combine this with is looking at sites that you've really loved sourcing before. So let's say you love sourcing through Macy's. You're going to be able to go ahead and go to blackfriday.com and it's going to show you you the upcoming holiday gift guides and all that kind of stuff, of course, but you're also going to be able to see the actual Black Friday ads from last year. So for example, right here, you can see that Macy's started doing their sale way before Thanksgiving, before Black Friday last year, they started it on Sunday. You can also check out their Cyber Monday sale, see when that started. And this is going to give you a really good idea of which of your favorite brands, different retailers are going to be having a great sale on just based on what they did last year. And as they start to come out, this website is going to be putting the new sales up here. So you can see like, here's the toy book that Macy's has already put out for this year. So this right away could give you some good ideas on like the types of brands, the types of toys that are going to be expected to be selling super well this year, right? So there's a lot you can learn from blackfriday.com here. And I'd really encourage you to pair this with any of the websites that you're already sourcing from. So you can just go ahead and double down on the inventory that you're already sourcing and the knowledge you already know. Instead of completely changing your focus, that is a huge mistake I made. And I should have just doubled down on stuff I was already super familiar with my first Q4 and I would have made way more money. The next thing you need to be doing during Q4 is making sure that your cash flow is as fast as humanly possible. Possible. For most of you guys at home, the biggest bottleneck during this Q4 is going to be not being able to spend enough money. While right now it might not be finding enough products, there's going to be a ton of opportunity, a ton of products to shoot way up in price, a ton of great sales to source on. And so capital should be your limiting factor this Q4. And the biggest thing you can do to get around that capital limitation is by doing more merchant fulfillment, right? So in early November, you should pretty much completely stop spending money on products that you want to send to FBA. You should be saving up some of that money to merchant fulfill that inventory. And the reason why this is so important is the day you receive a merchant fulfilled package, you can list it on Amazon, sell it, get it shipped out the door all in the same day, and you can get your money back two weeks later by Amazon's policies. Comparing that with FBA, if you're shipping off in the middle of November, you've shipped it off, it doesn't get there till mid December, maybe you sell a couple units and you absolutely have no shot of being able to use that money again during Q4 versus merchant fulfillment you can buy in early November. Let's say you find a really good item, really good sale, you list it two weeks later, you've still got that inventory back in time for Black Friday. Now it's 30 to 50% more because of that return on investment, and you can spend way more money on good inventory. So if cash flow is your limiting factor, there's almost no reason you should be doing any FBA during Q4. It should all be FBM. It's going to be massive for your cash flow. So the next big mistake that cost me a ton of money during my first Q4 was selling out on my items too fast. And this is going to be a super natural tendency that a lot of you guys have. But I want to show you an example of why this is so important, right? So looking at this random listing here, I just noticed it was an example of kind of the things that I saw happen to me. And that was not paying attention to the peak of Q4, which really is going to be between December 5th and December 15th to 20th, depending on the item you're looking at. And so on something like this, all of these sellers who were already trying to make their sales during, you know, early December right here, you can see how they got the buy box back here about $83, $90, somewhere in there. But there was really no reason for them to be selling out so early. The sales rank was still going lower and lower. It was still during the heat of Q4. Toys are selling like hotcakes. And because some of these later sellers were a little bit more patient, they started noticing the seller count drop because even as the seller count started dropping, it was only December 9th, right? There's no reason to hit the panic button if your inventory hasn't sold at the price you wanted it on December 9th. Your patience is going to be super, super rewarded this Q4. There's kind of an art to it, right? So let me show you on this listing. Once you got this price up to about $93, you see these seller counts start to drop off here. You should start thinking about lowering your prices. So for me, depending on the item, I might start lowering my prices a little bit between December 10th to December 15th, start to catch the tail end of the 
massive peak of Q4. And if you were doing that, let's say you waited until December 15th to lower your price, you were going to be rewarded by all these sellers disappearing. The buy box goes up to $105 and eventually it even disappeared to where these sellers were selling it for like $118 and making a ton of money on this listing. And so this Q4, when you have items that look like this, where the price shot way, way, way up last year, the seller count kept dipping. If you have an item like that, do not lower your price too early. You're going to cost yourself a ton of profit. So don't hit the panic button. Stick to your plan. You looked at this inventory. You noticed that the price shot way up last Q4. You noticed that the sales rate was awesome during last Q4. And so if you start to have inventory that doesn't do how you're hoping in the first couple of days of peak Q4, wait a second, make sure that the seller counts are decreasing. There's a good shot. You're going to be able to sell that inventory way more profitable than a lot of these other sellers here who hit the panic button, sold it too early. So another super expensive mistake I made has to do with something on this listing right here. And this is going to be especially useful for those of you guys who are doing merchant fulfillment. And that's going to be only selling on one certain listing. And so for example, I pulled up this listing right here. It's kind of a multi-pack of, you know, a couple different types of lotions. They sell super, super fast. You're going to see a ton of products like this where they sell really, really well. But these products that sell super, super well, you can see this is by itself is already kind of a bundle of sorts, right? So you know that there is another listing of just the one pack, right? So here's the one pack listing. Amazon's on this listing. Seems like they just went out of stock, but a massive advantage of doing FBM or even not just doing FBM. If you guys need to be doing FBA for whatever reason on your products, make sure that you're leveraging all the different possible listings for your products. And especially if you're FBM paying attention to the different listings, you could be switching your products to, right? So this listing right here, see it's got Amazon's been on it. It's about 13 bucks, 11 bucks, that kind of thing. Or on this listing right here, notice that there's actually two listings of these three fluid ounce bottles. There's another listing of the two pack of the bottles. And what's really interesting is this multi-pack over here that was two bottles, different types of facial lotions here. It's just a little bit more expensive than this listing right here. That was literally just for one bottle of this face lotion right here, right? So whether you're selling pants, socks, shoes, makeup, food, anything like that, make sure that you're checking, especially super fast selling listings like this one right here, just based on the fact that this was a bundle listing is already selling super fast. You found the one pack listing over here. This is literally selling 40,000 times a month. This is especially valuable for your products that sell really, really fast. Make sure that you're checking for any of those other listings. And if you are merchant fulfilling, try listing some of it on one listing, some of it on another listing. And then that gives you even more kind of at bats to wait for the prices to go up. Like we're waiting for on this toy right here. If you can take multiple swings at getting an item's price to shoot up during Q4 for you to sell out, there'd be no reason for you to sell all that stock through the listing that had way lower prices. You'd just be able to move all that inventory from the lower priced listing over to the higher priced listing. And especially if you're doing FBM, you can do that with a click of a button. It's as simple as changing the inventory in stock on one SKU to the inventory in stock on another SKU. And that's something that made me a ton of money during my first Q4. And I should have done it way more. I should have stocked up specifically on products that had multiple listings like this, simply because having multiple listings for your products, especially products that are going to sell well during Q4, it basically doubles, triples, quadruples the odds that you're going to be on a listing that shoots way up in price and way up in profit. But one of the biggest things I want you guys to remember this Q4 is do not hit the panic button. Again, I wanted to show you another listing here where during early December, this pair of pants sold way, way faster. And the price actually ended up being lower than the price where it normally was up here in November. It was like $54. And during Q4, a bunch of these new Amazon sellers, they hit the panic button on a listing like this. And because of that, the price went down to $50. The plan kept continuing though. The sales rank kept dipping down. It kept selling faster and faster. And all those sellers who hit the panic button, they paid the price because here towards the end of December, during the peak of Q4, there was not even a buy box. They were able to charge almost any price they wanted. You're seeing sales happen up here at like $66 after all the other less experienced, more panicked Amazon sellers sold out. This seller right here was able to sell a ton of these pants at $63, almost $10 more expensive than the outside of Q4 price, right? So do not hit the panic button this Q4 guys and paying super close attention to how it behaved last year during Q4. Go ahead and compare how the sales rank is changing, how the new seller count is changing compared to last year. And there's going to be a ton of opportunity for you to just wait it out, wait for the plan to repeat itself and do not hit the panic button. So if you guys want to see a ton more free game, it's going to help you scale your Amazon business. Make sure you go ahead and register for our next free class. The next thing you can see right here is on November 8th. If you're watching this video past then, go ahead and click the link down below and see if we're going to be doing another call pretty time soon. But this is going to be especially valuable for you guys who are watching right now. Make sure you go ahead and register for this. We're going to show you some of our favorite hacks that Miles and I used to sell over $800,000 during one 30 day period last year during Q4. We've been getting some super awesome feedback on these classes. It's been super awesome to see you guys on there. So go ahead and register for that. We'll give you a ton of free game.
And if you guys did get a ton of value out of this video, please let me know if I can answer any comments, questions, drop those down below in the comment section. Hit the subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I really do appreciate those of you guys who hit the subscribe button. I hit 60,000 subscribers recently, which is super cool to see. I never thought I'd have a chance as a teenager. I always wanted one of those shiny YouTube plaques. Now I kind of have a shot at it. So I really appreciate you guys who do subscribe to the channel. Let me know if I can help you guys out, support your Amazon business in any way during this Q4 and moving forward. But I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I will see you next time.